Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Joren or Triple as I like to make myself known online. And today I will be making a hopefully quick video on installing HasOS or HasIO on uh, VMware ESXi. I've seen a lot of blog posts on this already online and every time it seems that somebody is having at least one issue with it or, or something else is happening. I also haven't seen anything on ESXi 7.0 7 specifically, which is the um, ESXi version or the VMware version I'm using. So I thought to just create a small uh, video to show you how everything is supposed to go. So the first thing you will need to do is to go to the HES.io installation um, page and uh, download the VMDK file. So let me quickly put that in my downloads folder. For the next step, I would suggest that you have a tool available that um, has the capability of extracting the .gz uh, files, because you will need that. Go. So let me extract it here. So now we have the HasOS file available in our downloads. Oh, it has gone down somewhere. Here we go. So the next step that you need to do is to log in on your VMware ESXi um, instance or whatever. And in your data store, you want to create a new file. So go to the data store browser, create a directory. I'm going to call it test has um, because I already have a has OS folder and I don't want to abuse that one. So now let's upload um, this file, give it a minute or it's not even going to take a minute. Uh, and once it is done, we need to do some um, comment line magic in order to allow our image to work properly with VMware ESXi. The reason why we're going to do the next step is because the standard image or VMDK file that you download doesn't allow, for example, to create snapshots and roll up snapshots, uh, which is a feature that I use almost every time that I do a and uh, an update of Home Assistant. I create a snapshot at runtime, and then if I need to restore, I can restore it or not. Um, so it's, in my opinion, quite important that you can do that by default. So what are we going to do? We are going to uh, enable SSH um, because command line will be needed. You will see that SSH is open. It's putty. Log in. So now we're going to go to the location. Um, now I need to remind myself to so CD VMF, VMFS, which contains our data store volumes. And here it should have our data store one, which is indeed, as you can see, this data store here. So CD data store one, and we created a folder test house. So let me print my working directory, so VMS volumes, the name of your data store and the folder you just created. And then in this location, there should be your VMDK that you just downloaded. And now we're going to use a tool provided by uh, ESXi, so VMKFS tools dash I, write your old uh, file name and then the new one. Uh, so it will use HasOS and it will copy it, or the HasOS underscore OVA, blah, blah, blah. And it will copy it to HasOS in a format that uh, we can use properly in ESXi. So press enter, give it uh, uh, a second or two. Okay, so if I type LS now, you will see that we have a HasOS flop and a HasOS. Technically, we can remove the other one so this one, uh, there we go. So we only have those two files now. Um, I'm going to close this and we can um, disable SSH again. Um, and now it's time to actually create our virtual machine. So create register new VM. We're going to create a brand new one. Um, again, going to name it test has. Um, it's Linux for sure. And I think I chose this one. Uh, I'm not sure this is the best choice, but I 
don't think it matters that much. So we put it on a data store one. And now we have our um, statistics for our um, for our virtual machine. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, if you want to give it more CPUs, if you want it more or less memory, you can change this. I'm going to remove this virtual machine uh, of this video. Uh, so we want to remove the hard disk for sure. And last time I also removed the SCSI controller and the CD and DVD drive, because I wouldn't need them. Um, then we're going to add a hard disk, the existing one, which is the one we just created. So it has six gigabytes. Important here is to change it to IDE controller zero, otherwise it just won't boot. And I've also had it in the past when I started with SATA controller, booted it and then changed it afterwards, it didn't work. So it's important to do it here. Um, and then in VM options, for me, it, by default, it's EF, EFI uh, firmware. I've heard others where it's not the case, so just double check this. That's the best thing to do. Um, and also, I uh, unchecked this thing last time. This also gave me some troubles. Uh, so There we go. Let's click Next. Finish. And it should be here. Let's power it on. And let's take a look. Uh, there we go. So it is doing a whole lot of things. This can take some time. <laughs> Don't be annoyed if this takes... Uh, a minute or, or five, I would even say. I'm trying to wait for my network to... Uh, the last time it also came up. So let's just give it um, some time. Okay, so we have a, a network. Uh, my DHCP automatically assigned it, so let's uh, go to here and type 8123, which is the port of... Oh. Let's try that again. 8123, the port of Home Assistant. And we are now preparing Home Assistant. Um, let's give it uh, a few more minutes uh, to, to do this. If I'm not mistaken here, uh, this... I'm not sure if this stays like this or not, but uh, as, as long as this is uh, it's working fine, okay. And of course the speed of this will depend on, on how um, how many resources you give to the your device. Uh, to quickly confirm, my running instance has... Um, okay, at one gig of memory and, and one CPU, so it's indeed the default, but I've seen people using... Uh, two or three gigs of RAM, uh, so it, it's really up to you. But let's, I'll come back once this uh, has finished. Okay, <laughs> five seconds after I said that, it, uh, it worked. So, uh, this all doesn't matter for me. Uh, I'm not going to assign any devices. So as you can see, we are in our um, home assistant environment. We have our supervisor, um, where we can check um, the the version of our host of, of like the, the, the house OS and uh, operating system. There will also be um, yeah, you have your add-ons and so on. Um, before I conclude this video, I want to notice one important thing in my opinion. Uh, let's shut down Home Assistant and let's do it the proper way. So shut down. Um, I'm going to extend the size of my drive. Um, the reason why is by default it's six gigabytes. The first time that I did an update of either HesOS or HesIO or Home Assistant, I actually got a weird error that the location of the update file was not found. Uh, it kept triggering it. I, I debugged network, everything. Turned out that there just wasn't enough space on my hard disk, which sounds very annoying, but let's just uh, do it. Uh, is this about to shut down? Uh, okay, it has finally been shut down. It uh, took a while. Um, so, 
as I mentioned, the hard disk by default is uh, 6 gigabytes. I'm quickly going to confirm. Uh, here I have it at 8 gigabytes. So 8 gigabytes should be sufficient, of course, depending on how many sensors and so on you also want to keep in your database, um, how many add-ons you want to install. Uh, but yeah, so increase it just uh, save. It's done. <laughs> so let's uh, let's boot it up again. As you can see, we have an 8 gig hard disk. If I'm not mistaken, HasOS automatically uses everything available to it. Um, and doing this on a normal Linux distro, you would need to manually uh, repartition your uh, your drive. Uh, but HasOS uh, does that automatically. Let's see if it still has the same uh, IP address. Hope it does. Okay, uh, try to remember the password, was test right. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we have everything here. Um, we have our add-ons, um, you can install everything that you want. For example, uh, we can also now do the snapshots, so take snapshot, uh, test, we take a snapshot. There we go, snapshot is currently running. Um, we can install whatever we want. Um, I've never installed this one, I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. Let's see, we have ADA installed now. Uh, technically, I should be able to restore a snapshot, uh, snapshot now. I want to restore it. It has been restored. I think it's rebooting. Not even. Maybe a bit annoyed about uh, storing a snap snapshot at runtime. This is just a test environment for me, so I really don't care about uh, force shutting down if it breaks, it breaks. So. But as you can see, the add-on is gone again, uh, because it hasn't been installed yet, because I restored the previous snapshot. So, quick video. Uh, what? turned out a bit long as expected because of my uh, playing around with snapshot but i hope you guys enjoyed it it's it's very easy to get it to run once you know what clicks to do what to disable what to uh, change uh, i will also create a small blog post on my website so you guys can check out the exact order of things you need to do i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, let me know in the comments how you are enjoying your uh has os or has io running on, on psxi personally i'm i'm really happy with with how it is performing however i have not fully migrated over to SOS yet so let me know what you guys think hope you guys enjoyed and see you again in the next one bye